what's up guys welcome back to my channel so star wars jedi survivor the game is out i am hearing that it is an amazing game um i did a reaction to the trailer um i'm gonna put that video linked to this one so you guys can see my reaction to that it looked really really good now i haven't played the first one I haven't played the first one. I am told that it would be best for me to play the first one before playing this one, even though this one looks really, really good. But we're going to go ahead and see what IGN, IGN had to say with their review for uh, Star Wars Jedi Survivor. Let's check this out. At first, I was afraid. No! I was petrified. Look at this. A lightsaber. I kept thinking... How could Respawn follow up on its outstanding Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order? But then I spent so many nights just playing the sequel and seeing how they got it right. And Cal Kestis grew strong. And I learned how to get along. And now we're back in outer space. Oh, okay, 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 don't leave, I'll stop. The point is that with vastly expanded combat options, bigger, more open maps, many more abilities to play with, and enough collectible stuff to fill a Corellian freighter, Star Wars Jedi survivors in many ways the Batman Arkham City to Fallen Order's Arkham Asylum. And much like those Arkham games did for Batman, nothing else convincingly captures the power fantasy of playing as a Force user quite as well as this. Get the enemy. We'll do this together. Especially considering there's no reason not to go back and play Fallen Order before starting Survivor if you haven't, mm -hmm. I greatly appreciate that the sequel starts you out with most of the powers and upgrades that Cal had already acquired. There's no corny amnesia or, oh no, my force oh. powers are gone gimmick to make you relearn how to double jump or use force push. And no Jawas showed up to steal away the climbing claws that make scaling walls much faster or the scomp link that lets BD1 hack things. So you get to carry over those Outside of having to earn back your healing canisters and life and force bar extensions, this is more or less Cal as we left him five years prior. So we're already off to an exciting running start when things kick off with a brief caper on Imperial Coruscant. You're quickly thrown right back into force pushing stormtroopers off wow, ledges and chaining the other movement tricks like wall running, climbing, swinging, and sliding down ramps. And that's just the beginning. The Spider-Man style grapple is introduced before you leave the planet. And the unlocks keep coming from there at a rewarding pace. When you get the mid-air dash ability to pair with your double jump, things really take off. You can cover such crazy distances without touching the ground, changing directions twice to reach things around corners, that I had to completely rethink what was possible. It's not as though Survivor invented the air dash, but Respawn makes excellent use of it and further flexes those Titanfall muscles. Lightsabers are, of course, the stars of the war. And Survivor kicks up the excellent dueling from Fallen Order by several notches with Ooh. five different fighting stances that are all brilliantly animated to create some of the flashiest and fiercest Star Wars melee battles I've ever seen. Whoa. You don't even have to be all that good at <laughs> nailing the timing of strikes, parries, and dodges for fights to look spectacular and smooth. And did you notice the arms and legs getting cut off? It's great! Ooh. Cal's lightsaber has many customizable cosmetic parts. And all of the available blade colors are unlocked shortly after the start, so you can make Cal more your own from the very beginning. That also goes for his blaster and his range of clothing, which is far more extensive this time around, as well as his new haircut and beard options. He'll always be the same Cal Kestis underneath it, but your character will likely have a very different vibe from mine. Yes, it is a little silly to find haircuts and beards in treasure chests, but sure, why not? And I'm just delighted at the customization for our loyal companion BD-1. In Fallen Order, you could only change his paint job, but just look at all of this, and look at the way his body reacts. It's another lovely little touch in a game that presents so many. He's so cute! But anyway, you can only equip two lightsaber stances at a time, which gives your cow another dose of personality. I really don't want this inside. So after dabbling in the single, double-bladed, and dual-wielding stances that carry over, I settled on the two new ones. The Kylo Ren-inspired crossguard style is like a slow and heavy broadsword that's great for hammering a stunned target into the floor, while the blaster style lets you dispatch small enemies without having to close the gap. It is, quite literally, a blast. They pair nicely with the expanded set of force powers that allow you to do things like this. You can, of course, swap out your stances at any meditation circle, but each stance has its own skill tree, so you're encouraged to specialize. By the time I reached the second half of the story, I had my clear favorites and no regrets. The story does the job that it needs to do well. Get you from one exciting action scene to the next. Oh. 
quite literally by accidentally falling into it, Cal finds himself in a race to locate what's effectively a map to a lost treasure planet. We should check this out. That's very much in keeping with him as the Nathan Drake of the Star Wars universe. What is this? And it leads to plenty of excuses to visit old, abandoned puzzle chambers. It might take you 20 hours or 30, depending on how long you spend taking a detour to get eaten by the damn Rancor and other optional bosses. For me, it was in the 30s. Woo! My main issue with the story is that nearly every big twist is foreshadowed so heavily that it was only ever a matter of when a reveal would happen, not if. The key we have been searching for! The identities of the main villains are a secret as of now, and shall remain unspoiled here, but they're pretty easy to see coming a light year away. In any case, at least they're written and acted mm -hmm. with enough depth that they don't feel like retreads of anyone Cal has faced before. And neither is a two-dimensional Sith Lord who has somehow returned. There's more to them than that, and Survivor successfully prioritizes character over plot for the most part. Kill him. Oh, no! No! Aww. Hey! Nice. We're all together! Yes. The cast I enjoyed so much in Fallen Order is back in full force to go through those motions. And this time, actor Cameron Monaghan's Cal is not so easily outshined by the crew of the Mantis. His motivations are about more than simply fighting the Empire now. It's about whether he can live a life where he's something more than a resistance fighter. Let go of his guilt and find a home that's safe. His path after escaping Order 66 is contrasted against what it could have been if he'd had different priorities and made different choices. Because of that context, his decisions have more weight to them, making him a much more realized protagonist this time around. I'm Cal. This is BD-1. <laughs> Why are you cute little droid? <laughs> Naturally, BD-1 never left Cal's side. But the rest of the crew are all given very human reasons for their parting of ways after Fallen Order and why they're coming back together now. Me, you... The space witch, Seer. Breeze's lovable cantankerousness made him a favorite. You missed the mantis, huh? Sure, I was worried about the kind of abuse you were putting it through. And he's happy to deliver more of that, along with some sage wisdom, while carefully avoiding overuse of his catchphrase. All right, make like a rock and quit moving around my cabin. Marin returns and immediately rekindles the romantic chemistry between herself and Cal. I missed mm. you, Marin. And riding her teleporting yeah. coattails leads to Survivor's single most thrilling action sequence. And though she's less of a constant presence due to Cal no longer needing a mentor, the ever-intense Sayre is more powerful than ever, and that's memorably on display in one of the story's biggest moments. We both have our roles to play in this struggle. Aside from a large cast of colorful alien side characters, the other new member of the group is Bode. He is a friend. It's so nice to finally meet you. He's another roguish mercenary type who, much like Cal did in Fallen Order, initially comes off somewhat blandly as the two bro it up to establish the friendship they've struck up fighting the Empire off-screen together. As his backstory is fleshed out, however, he does become a more interesting companion. I don't get to see her as often as I'd like, but at least I can provide for her. Fighting alongside allies on certain story missions this time around is a treat, especially watching Marin blink around the battle and pick off targets. <laughs> They don't need babysitting because they can't be hurt, but you can have them prioritize an annoying enemy. Beyond that, they're only really used to open up paths for you to reach new areas when prompted. But their banter and companionship definitely liven up scenes in a way that BD1's adorable bleeps and boops couldn't do alone. Of course, with new friends must also come new enemies. And following a whole game of battling mostly Imperial Inquisitors, Damn. it's a relief to see that the Empire's role here is more in the background. Their parade of trooper types Ooh. and security droids are mostly here to provide variety after you've been fighting the main enemy army of raiders and their salvaged Separatist battle droids. It's a clever way to plausibly merge the original and prequel trilogy enemies together in the same game. Impressive. It's villainy. Oh. There's also no shortage of beasts that resemble what we saw in Fallen Order. No matter where you go in the Star Wars galaxy, it seems life always finds a way to make giant bugs and big angry wampas. Oh! It's a good mix of enemies and subtypes that builds on the previous game's already respectable lineup. And when I found myself yeah. in the middle of a fray where different factions are battling it out, including any weak-minded foes I temporarily force confused over to my side, it's a great time. On the subject of creatures, one of Cal's many new abilities is to ride mounts. Though that isn't ever really used for much besides galloping across big empty areas slightly faster than Cal could have run on foot. 
There's also a flying animal that can be used as a glider, though only at very specific points. So it's not much of a game changer either, but it does play nicely into environmental puzzles. Speaking of environments, this journey takes us to a handful of never-before-seen planets, some of which are expansive and include a variety of extremely different areas within them. Your new home base world of Kobo, for instance, has everything from grassland to swamp to underground facilities, a crashed separatist ship, and even its own version of Cloud City. They're far from the typical Star Wars one-note worlds like Tatooine or the forest moon of Endor. This place is in ruins. Every time I entered a new area, I'd circle the camera, looking for telltale signs the level designers leave to indicate a wall is runnable, a ceiling can be clung to, a crack can be squeezed through, and more. That's These smart. levels are meticulously thought-out puzzles in and of themselves, and only rarely did I run across something that didn't feel intuitive or fair once I took into account all of the tools at my disposal. I'm on gaps. Considering that this adventure is roughly equal oh, parts combat and there. puzzle solving, the fact that there's such a broad selection of types works in its favor. Puzzles that deal with directing energy beams and even painting paths are clever and well done, on par and sharing some ideas with a lot of what we saw in God of War Ragnarok last year. They aren't groundbreaking in their design, but they're consistently fun nonetheless. I'm starting to think we're in the right place. Throughout it all, Survivor is a gorgeous game with beautifully detailed environments and characters, and perhaps as a result, not one of the best performing. My PS5 mm -hmm. playthrough saw some fairly gnarly slowdowns from the expected 30 frames per second in 4K quality mode, especially when fighting around smoke or fog, which made timing my parries and dodges difficult. <laughs> Disappointingly, even the 1440p performance mode, which most of this oh. review footage is recorded in, isn't close to holding a lock 60 frames per second. I also saw a few crashes and bugs that forced me to quit and reload my saves to progress. That's <laughs> EA says the day one patch will come with improvements on all platforms, but if history is any guide, it might take a little while before that's completely ironed out. A smooth frame rate is certainly important when battling survivors' multiple lightsaber-wielding bosses, because there is no shortage of challenge in learning the timing of parrying their strikes and dodging their unblockable attacks. Mm. I confess, after a few hours of banging my head against the brutal final boss, I finally resorted to turning the difficulty down a notch so I could see the ending in time for this review. That said, there's not a lot that felt especially novel about these fights. They're well-made, but mostly conventional, and one aspect that hasn't seen a great improvement over Fallen Order. When it comes to tracking down those bosses in the first place, I certainly appreciate that the Jedi games give you a map, but it does leave something to be desired when it comes to usability. Just like in Fallen Order, this seems so dedicated to the idea of resembling a light blue Star Wars hologram that it's not always easy to figure out what you're looking at and the directions its waypoints give you aren't always accurate. However, its dotted lines were generally good enough to point me in the right direction when I struggled to find a path forward or was feeling lost. Also, this time Respawn has granted us the ability to fast travel between save points, which feels like an act of mercy when the objective is on the other side of one of these large labyrinthian maps. They're dense, too. Survivor is packed full of things to do around the edges of the main story, including bounty hunters and legendary creatures to track down and kill... <laughs> combat challenges, and more. Some of those are seriously tough, even on the default Jedi Knight difficulty. On top of all that, there's just an intimidating amount of stuff to collect. And yes, there is a new game plus. I'm sure the Emperor won't mind if I deliver you to him in pieces! Mm. Uh -oh. Star Wars Jedi Survivor takes what Fallen Order achieved and wall runs with it, then double jumps and air dashes straight into an epic lightsaber battle. Rather than taking us back to square one to begin Cal's journey as a Padawan again, we're trusted with control of a full-fledged Jedi Knight, who we can grow into a master of superhuman mobility and fantastic and challenging combat. Damn. With a new set of larger, more diverse, and densely packed worlds to explore and a memorable cast of returning characters, Survivor tells a story that may be predictable at times, but is still fun and emotional to watch play out. Launch performance issues aside, it's a sequel that does virtually everything better than the original, which was already an exceptional Star Wars game. If Respawn makes one more like this, it'll be the best Star Wars trilogy in 30 years, hands down. Ooh. For more, check out our reviews of Dead Island 2 and Resident Evil 4 Remake. And for everything else, stick with IGN. Copy that, Bravo.
nice work, everyone. That was pretty darn good. I gotta say, the graphics in this game looked absolutely crazy. And I kind of snuck downstairs while Tyrone was playing. And I, I saw it while he was playing it. And it looks really, really good. Um, like I said, like I've been told that I should play the first one first before this one. Because like they said here, there's certain powers that you get that you can carry over to this game. Opposed to me playing this game. And then going back to the first and not being able to take what I have here with me to the first. So that's the plan. But this looks really good. It looks like I'll have a lot of fun with this. But um, other than like the minor glitches, the fact that, you know, they rated this 9 out of 10. It looks really good. And even Tyrone said like he really had fun playing this earlier today. So um, this is definitely on my roster to play amongst a whole bunch of other games that I want to get my hands on. But in the meantime, leave your comments down below. Let me know if you enjoyed this review from IGN for uh, Star Wars Jedi Survivor. And if you guys will be playing, if you played the first one, let me know what you guys think of it. And if you enjoyed my reaction to it, let me know as well. And if you haven't done so, please subscribe to my channel. Hit like, share, and don't forget to hit the notification bell so you guys can get notified whenever I pop up on your feed. I'll see you guys later. Toodle!